Greetings from Hanover, Germany. Welcome here at CBIT 2016, where we are here with Huawei to check out the latest in technology. Now, CBIT's quite an interesting show. It's been around since the 1970s, and at one stage, it was the world's largest technology show, commanding an audience of something like 850,000 people. But attendance has dwindled uh, since the early 2000s because of the fragmentation in the technology industry and, uh, you know, shows like MWC taking a lot of the audience away. But in the last few years, CBIT has been undergoing a transformation and a rebirth from consumer to business and really enterprise business solutions. So all the big guns are here from IBM to Microsoft, Intel's here, the likes of Ericsson, all of them are here and also companies that you've never ever heard of in your life responsible for much of the technology that happens in the background when businesses use technology. Now the focus this year has been on smart cities, it's been on safe cities, it's been on automation, robotics, a new way of doing things and moving to the cloud seamlessly and the impact that technology is impacting on these businesses is very very apparent here. It's about business driving costs down and moving much of that functionality to the cloud where it's been a massive focus here at CBIT 2016. Joe, thank you so much for joining us on Techbusters. Um, some fantastic innovation here on the Huawei stand, but you're really focusing uh, a lot, amongst other things, on safe cities and connected cities because this is where the future is, isn't it? Yes, I think that in the future, uh, safe city would be a not a not, not only a standard of living, but it's also a necessity for a lot of countries. Now, when you look at the uh, safe city, wh wh what do you mean by safe city? Well, a city, a city, if you look at a safe city in perspective, uh, I mean, there's a public safety, okay, that is the one thing that we focus on. Uh, for example, is this like, uh, what happened, what can you do before an event or an incident can happen, and what can you do uh, during the, 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 the incident, and what can you do right afterward, okay? So I think these are the three, uh, area, three phases that we are actually focusing on. We do it through like two technologies or two principles. One of them is called convergence, Another one is called visualization. Convergence means that you have collaboration between, we have a system that allows or empower the first responding unit to be able to collaborate together. For example, fire department, police, paramedics, hospital, and anyone that we require to respond in case of any emergency, they can actually collaborate all together. Another one is actually visualization. Visualization means um, that you are able to visualize exactly the commander at the command center would be able to visualize a, a, a video real life, a real time video life that to be online. So you exactly, you will, you'll be able to exactly know exactly what's going on, okay, during an incident. I mean, like we can see here in the background, I mean, this is a typical example of what we're talking about, the visualization and the video where the control room and every single respondent has full control of the situation. Yes. Uh, the, the, the control room would have the full control. They exactly know how many policemen are actually in the field during the incident or before the incident, how many police cars are actually available, how many ambulances are, are, are they can deploy for rescue mission. Now, are you using specific technology? Because I see on your stand here you've got lots of cameras as well. But uh, I want to take a walk to the uh, professional broadband trunking because that for me is the real interesting one over here where in the background we've got this uh, broadband trunking which is the ELTE rapid system. Yeah, this is called the ELTE rapid system. Uh, it supports many spectrums. Okay, basically it will fit for every country use, right? This box here, you will be able to set up in around 15 minutes. And I'll tell you the story behind it. When I talk to the policemen and all the first, re the first responding units, okay, uh, many times, and one of the things that they say that uh, they say to me, uh, after a disaster strike, beside rescue, okay, there's another important things they need to set up right away. That is communication. Now this box here, okay, you are able to set this up in around 15 minutes, and you're able to connect up to 100 terminals, okay, so that you can have people working collaborative together during the rescue mission, not just everyone is doing on their own, right? So it will actually, uh, it will actually optimize your, your, your rescue mission. You'll be able to save a lot more people. Remember the word golden 72 hours. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, golden 72 hours is actually very important because that's the time frame that you'll be able to recover more survivors alive. But what's fascinating about this system is it's using LTE, but in a, in a closed network. So you've got, what, a 10 kilometer radius, more or less. You can connect up to 50 devices, as many as you like, I suppose. You will, you will be able to connect to about 100 terminals. 
okay, up to 100 terminals. And this device would be able to provide communication within one kilometer to five kilometers, depending on the on the size, okay, the complexity of the of the of the uh, 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 the, the, the the site. And it's, it includes video, it includes all those kind of services from the devices, right? It includes video, voice and data. So that all the policemen, all the people actually working in the, during the disaster, they were able to capture video, okay, if they see something wrong, uh, they can communicate with different groups of people. They are able to send data back to the command center to have a sound decision to be made by the commander or the city mayors. This is really interesting because you have a success story to share with us. Now, you've deployed in, in Kenya, in Nairobi in particular, and you've had a tremendous reduction in the crime rate in 2015, which is fantastic. Yes, yes. Uh, according to the police statistic, the reduction of crime rate was act actually done by 46%. Uh, that's done by the police. I think that the cameras actually contribute a lot of uh, success to the, to, the, to, to, to the safe city, public safety uh, situation. This is where the future is. I mean, if you look five years from now, where, where do you see it all going? Uh, are all cities going to be smart? Will, will, will the companies, uh, will the countries invest in their smart cities? I suppose they've got to do it. Well, I believe that the, in the future, the whole, uh, the whole world is being connected by millions and millions and billions of sensors, okay, where they can detect uh, a lot of things, okay, out of the, the, the environment. For example, data analytics for human behavior, uh, data analytics for pollution, data analytics for bad weathers and anything like this. So the world would be more predictable in the future.